Ask Abby, providing answers, insights, and education designed to give you the tools and knowledge you need to thrive financially and live confidently in retirement. Another edition of Ask Abby here with Abby Reed of the Reed Financial Group, the retirement family. More great information on your financial investment and retirement planning efforts to make the most of our money. And we all need to do that in this economic and financial environment. And we are in the midst of tax season, Abby. So continuing on with kind of a theme we've had over the last few programs here, specific situations, specific tax questions. What about those IRA and Roth IRA contributions, an opportunity that we can still do a little something to control last year's tax bill? Yeah. So there's um, there's some tax planning and tax opportunities that have to be done before the end of the year. And then there's some that um, have a deadline of tax time for, um, you know, April, whatever date it is this year, I think it's pushed back a couple of days for, for some reason. Um, and then some of them, we won't get into this today, but some of them are even, if you, if you file an extension, you have until, um, the, the extension is due, uh, in certain circumstances. So what we're going to concentrate on today are the, uh, IRA Roth IRA contributions. So you have until, um, you file your taxes, uh, the following year. So you can still make a IRA contribution or a Roth IRA contribution for 2022. So it can be retroactive. Um, if you've already done that, you can go ahead and make a contribution for, for 2023. Um, if you want to go ahead and get ahead of that. But um, if you're looking at your, your tax return and you're thinking, maybe I need an additional tax deduction for some reason, and you qualify for an IRA, uh, a deductible IRA contribution, you can go ahead and do that. Um, if you want to go the um, the other route and do a, um, a Roth IRA contribution, so you've already been taxed on that money, it's not going to be a tax benefit right now. The tax benefit is down the road. Um, and it really just depends on your specific situation, what your goals are, um, um, what your long-term view of what taxes are going to look like in the future. Um, I have some, you know, obviously some opinions and and some some research and um, and uh, math and science that 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 backs up that we're probably in a pretty low tax rate environment. Um, but for people that have a really high had had a really high tax year last year, like um, if you exercise some stock options, those type things, then you might want to go the the deductible way if you qualify for it. So it kind of just depends. But we still have that opportunity. We can sort of take a look at what the taxes might look like and then make a decision. And and Abby, there's those among us that are earning a pretty comfortable living. In fact, a, a an income that is over the limits and limitations to even be able to make certain types of contributions. Yeah. And I think it's really interesting because that income limit used to be a really nice salary. If you were making over $100,000, then you were doing really, really well. And with the cost of living and with inflation, uh, as it's been the last several years, it's uh, more and more people are getting to that limit. So I'm hoping that they raise those, look at the current environment and raise that income limit because it's it's too low now. But, um, but anyway, so if you're over that income limit, um, you might not qualify to make a Roth IRA contribution. You might be excluded from that. Um, and you might not even be able to make a deductible IRA contribution. So what that means is if you're making over a certain limit, depending on if you're married or single and how you file your taxes, um, you, you're you basically restricted from, from those extra saving opportunities. So um, 401ks and, and retirement accounts through employers or through the government work a little bit differently. Um, but these are individual accounts that you're kind of maybe doing on your own or with an advisor. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is the non-deductible IRA contributions, because a lot of times people don't know about that um, or know about the tax strategies that um, can be used with that. And it does get a little bit complicated. And so we're going to try and simplify it today and, and talk about some strategies that um, reach the same goal, but do it in a much more efficient way. Well, let's, let's do it. Let's 
give the information on that opportunity to to get money as much as we can, save for retirement in the most efficient manner. What do we need to do if we are income eliminated? So a lot of times with with our high income earning clients, um, what they want to do is, I mean, yes, they want to reduce their tax bill now as much as possible, as we all do. But a lot of times and what we coach them to think about is the long term. So let's not only think about our tax bill now, but let's think about it for the next 20, 30 plus years and how to reduce that over those decades, because that's what's going to be the most beneficial. So um, what what we talk to a lot of people about and, and what we get questions about is backdoor Roth strategies. So like we mentioned before, if your income is over a certain limit, you cannot make a Roth IRA contribution. Um, but what you can do is it what's called a backdoor Roth. And the IRS has come out um, several times and said they're fine with this strategy. Go for it. Um, it's it, It's fine with them. So what you do is you make a non-deductible IRA contribution. Um, so you don't get a tax benefit for for that. It's not deducted from your from your income. It's just say six thousand goes in, um, and then if you leave it in that IRA designation, then it's tax def- the growth is tax deferred after that. So what the backdoor Roth strategy is is you then convert that money directly to a Roth IRA. So essentially, it's the exact same thing as making a Roth IRA contribution, but because you're over that income limit, you have to take this extra step to make it legal and and to make the IRS happy. Very silly, but that's just how it is right now. Um, the the complication comes when you have uh, other IRA funds. So really, the IRS looks at all of your IRA money, even if you have it at seven different companies and seven different IRAs, they look at it as as one balance. They look at it as this is your IRA, this is how much you have in it. So what they're not going to let you do is um, convert that $6,000 from that non-deductible IRA to a Roth. So you have $100,000 in uh, other IRA money they're going to make you pay taxes on that um, that Roth conversion based on what percentage of your total IRA balance that $6,000 is. So you might be doing this thinking, all right, I already paid money on this. I'm going to uh, put it into a non-deductible IRA and then convert it to a Roth. I'm not going to owe any taxes because it's a, it's a non-deductible IRA. And then when tax time comes and you're reporting all of this, Surprise, um, you actually do owe taxes on that because you had other IRA funds. So a way to avoid that is instead of putting that $6,000 into a non-deductible IRA, go ahead and convert some of the funds from your current IRA balance and use that $6,000 to pay the taxes. So the end result's going to be the same, but it is much more simple. Um, it's way less of a hassle. Um, and you're not going to have a, a surprise, you know, accidental tax bill um, the next the next year when you file your taxes. So go ahead and and work towards converting as much of that IRA as you can or as you want to. And then once that's done, you can move to the strategy of non-deductible IRA contributions converting that to a Roth, um, because then you don't have to worry about that percentage uh, tricky situation anymore. And then once again, Abby, if we've got the option, there are none of these hassles, none of these earnings limitations, none of the questions of conversions generally within the company sponsored plan that we have, like a 401k, and we can save more there. So depending mm-hmm. on our situation may simplify things correct correct so with a with a 401k the uh the contribution limits are much higher no income limits they're just much easier uh because the the reason for that is because what what they were thinking is all right most people are going to have a uh, employee an employer sponsored plan and then maybe they're going to do an IRA or a Roth IRA on the side. So we're going to make those contributions much lower and have some limitations on it so people can't you know, take advantage of it. Um, but for the 401k, that's really kind of the front line of savings um, in the IRS's eyes. Uh, so you can put much more in there um, than you can in an in a, in a IRA. Um, you can, depending on your plan, and all of them are a little bit different, you can... Uh, put some of your contributions into the tax deferred. You can put some into the Roth or even 
non-taxable if you've reached the limits. There's so many different options in 401ks. Um, and then, so say, for example, you're putting your entire contribution into the Roth um, portion of your 401k and you get an employer match, um, you're still going to get that match, but it is going to go into the tax deferred side, which is fine. That's the way it is right now. There's been some movement towards allowing a company match to go into the Roth. Right. Um, but the companies get a tax break right. for making that contribution. They're nice right. enough to to match your dollars for the sake of the tax break in yes. my mind, maybe not nice enough to pay your taxes for you on those dollars. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I don't know any company that would be nice enough to do that. Um, so we'll see, we'll see what happens with that. But right now your portion can go into the Roth. Remember too, though, that that is going to increase your income. So if you've been directing your contributions to the tax def deferred portion, you're essentially taking that contribution off of your income. Um, at the end of the day. And so if you change it to some going into Roth or all going into Roth, that is going to increase your, your income. Um, I like having a, a combination. So for my clients at, at retirement and through retirement, I really like having some diversification in those three different buckets. Um, so it, 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 it depends, um, but you don't want to, you know, hike it up too much and then have the domino effect of having, um, too much tax. So it just depends on your situation. Um, but a, a, a Roth 401k contribution can be really, really helpful because that's the, that that's the best way you can put as the most money in a tax-free account into a Roth IRA. HSA, if you have that available, that's a fantastic, I mean, I absolutely love those. Um, it can be triple triple tax free, um, which is fantastic. So take advantage of that if you have that option. Um, and then also what you can do is uh, do what's called a mega backdoor Roth strategy. So you can contribute to your Roth 401k. And then if you're eligible, you can do what's called a uh, in-service rollover, roll that over into a Roth IRA. And then you have much more control over uh, the investments. Um, you can uh, have an advisor manage that. Um, if, you know, if, if it's, um, outside of the 401k, um, you can choose different investment options. You can, um, you know, even buy a CD or there's just a lot more options and a lot more control when you have it in an IRA. And so that's another way to, uh, to get around the, the restrictions for Roth IRAs for mm -hmm. high income people. And Abby, that is why in other tax planning or even just overall retirement planning considerations, if we are getting close to that retirement age or or even just 59 and a half, uh, another consideration is that in-service distribution, which will allow us a lot of that additional control you're talking about. Yep. So 59 and a half is, is, uh, one of those trigger ages, um, where you have some additional opportunities that, that, um, come about. So if you have a 401k that it, with an employer, you're still working for, um, typically you're going to be able to do what's called an in-service rollover. So you roll over your account or a portion of your account to an IRA after you turn 59 and a half. Um, there's a lot that goes into figuring out if it needs to stay in the 401k or if a, a rollover would be beneficial to you. There's a lot that goes into that decision. It should not be made lightly. Um, and that's part of what we do when we start working with people uh, and, and helping them with retirement is figure out, let's do a rollover analysis, figure out what opportunities you have in this 401k. If you're eligible for to do a rollover, is it going to be of benefit to you? Sometimes 401ks are so restrictive in the options that they have, it is beneficial to do um, a rollover IRA. Um, sometimes it's best to, to keep it in there. So if you're going to retire and you're maybe 55, 56. So just under that 59 and a half, sometimes it's beneficial to keep that, that money in the 401k, even if you want to do a rollover, because there's more access to it until you reach 59 and a half. So there's a lot of different things that you have to think about before uh, making any changes to, um, to that or doing a mega backdoor um, Roth conversion. Um, but they're all strategies that, that are available um, and can be taken advantage of in the right circumstances. Um, and that's, that's what we help with. So when we do an analysis on, on uh, somebody's 
entire financial situation, portfolio, um, you know, tax situations, contributions to 401ks. We're looking at all of this and we're going to let you know, these are the strategies that will be beneficial to you and that we recommend taking advantage of. You don't have to do this on your own. We will help you and walk you through this so that no mistakes are made. Yep. And still some potential moves that are available for last year, certainly for the current year, that will impact and affect all of the years ahead. And that's what they look at there at the Retirement Family, the Reed Financial Group. If you'd like to be in touch, go to goaskabby.com. That's where you can be in touch with Abby Reed, or you can give the Reed Financial Group a call 678-442-0255, 678-442-0255. Abby, thank you for the update on some of the last minute tax moves. Uh, one other note, more of us are self-employed. And so those SEP and simple IRAs, kind of variations on a theme here, may be good opportunities if we've got any kind of self-employed income to, to take a look at that, to get a little bit more saved than what uh, other accounts offer as, as our limits, correct? Yes, correct. So for our self-employed um, folks, it's a little bit more difficult to to save for retirement. And what we see a lot of is uh, because it's more difficult, there's maybe not, maybe it's a small business and there's not a 401k established yet um, or a, a, a company sponsored retirement account of any kind. What's what, what typically ends up happening is they're, they're making good money. Um, and that either gets spent because it's just sitting in a bank account. Um, it gets invested maybe in a non-qualified account, which is tax each year, typically, um, or it's reinvested back into the business. And that's great, but you still need some diversification as a business owner. You can't and, and shouldn't have too much of your, your profit going back into your business. You need to diverse diversify a little bit. And uh, a simple IRA or a SEP IRA are going to have much, much higher contribution limits than an IRA. Or you can also look into a solo 401k, um, a little bit more as far as administrative um, work with a solo 401k, but it is an option. Um, if you if you qualify for the solo 401k um the sep and the simple iras are going to be based on uh, a certain um a certain income calculation so you have to figure out how much you would qualify to contribute to it um, and then if you do it in time you can maybe take some additional distributions from your business and increase your your income as far as the the uh, owner distributions go and put that into a sep or a, a simple ira and then you can invest that however however you want to um we we manage sep and simple iras um you can actually even set up kind of like a private pension with your sep and simple which we have a lot of our business owners do using um, fixed annuities, fixed index annuities. So that um, that account goes into, into one of those. And then when you're ready to retire, you can start lifetime income from that. So you are basically setting up a private pension for yourself and your family um, without having to go and, and work for a corporation or, or the government for 40 years. <laughs> So All kind of kinds a, of options available of both worlds. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But you got to figure out which ones are uh, available and most appropriate for your situation. And that's why mm -hmm. you've got the resource, ladies and gentlemen, of Abby Reed there, the Retirement Family Reed Financial Group to help you understand each of these options, which ones are available to you, which ones are the most advantageous for you. Give a call 678-442-0255, 678-442-0255. You've got questions, would like an individual review, consultation, retirement planning strategy session, just go to goaskabby.com, goaskabby.com. A couple of different ways to get in touch and lots of available resources there as well. Abby, always appreciate the time, always informative. Thank you for being our resource. Absolutely. My pleasure, Peter. Here to answer your financial questions, visit the website goaskabby.com for show resources and to submit your questions and get answers or to schedule your complimentary financial investment and retirement planning strategy session. You can also reach out to Abby directly at 678-442-0255. That's 678-442-0255 or at goaskabby.com. 
Investment advisory services offered through Brookstone Capital Management, LLC, BCM. A registered investment advisor. BCM and Refinancial Group are independent of each other. Insurance products and services are not offered through BCM, but are offered and sold through individually licensed and appointed agents. Third-party ratings and recognitions are no guarantee of future investment success and do not ensure that a client or prospective client will experience a higher level of performance or results. These ratings should not be construed as an endorsement of the advisor by any client, nor are they representative of any one client's evaluation.